Hello folks, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, this 12 volt Chevrolet rear end I got here in my shop that I'm working on. Uh, this is not going to be meant to be a complete comprehensive how-to video uh, on how to redo a rear end, but I'm going to go over a few points that may can help somebody down the road. Uh, a few things I've learned on this rear end, uh, mainly going to be things about what not to do. Uh, this particular rear end, the person it belonged to had taken it apart. Him and his buddy had worked on it before they brought it to me, so it was in a box. Um, basically, the story is in a 70s model Chevrolet pickup, it was a 373 ratio and they wanted to go to a 308 ratio so they got another used gear and carrier and put it in themselves and didn't take any time or effort to set the bearing preload or anything didn't take no effort to make sure that the pinion bearings were correctly tightened the gear pattern or anything of that nature the first time they run it down the road the pinion nut wasn't, the crush sleeve wasn't crushed and the bearings wasn't tight. The pinion walked into the carrier. Here's the old carrier on the table where the pinion gear walked into it. Of course luckily it didn't damage the pinion gear any. So we was able to save the gear set. We're trying to do this thing on a limited budget also. But up in here, I don't know whether it'll show up but up in here you can see there's a lot of wear on the carrier where the spider gears go so long story short what wound up happening is the 373 carrier won't work because this distance of the mountain flange from the center line is, is the wrong distance when you drop below the 340 something gear you have to change the carrier the 373 uses a different carrier than the 308 but anyway I got on eBay a new carrier is like three four hundred bucks I got on eBay and found a used one in good shape for a hundred bucks and then twenty something bucks shipping when I got the new carrier or a used carrier in good shape and his original 308 used 308 gear that he had was in pretty good shape. It didn't hurt any of the teeth or anything on the pinion. Uh, and I've got it all back together and it appears to be doing pretty good. Or everything's fitting good. The gear pattern looks correct. Uh, and that orange compound on there, it came in my pinion bearing, or it came in my bearing kit. You just brush that compound on there and turn it and when the pinion touches the compound it'll scrape some of the compound off and you can see where the pinion's actually making contact and in the setup book that came with the bearing kit it shows you what the correct pattern looks like uh, I got the bearing kit from Randy's ring and pinion uh, and the disclosure I'm not a paid endorser of Randy's ring and pinion but I have bought parts from them over the years and have never had nothing but good success with them. They're good folks and they sell, seem to sell parts at a reasonable price. Um, this kit here for a 12 bolt was I think uh, right around 100, 130 bucks maybe shipping and all. This USA standard gear comes with a good, very well laid out instruction booklet that applies, it's kind of like a universal book, it applies to most all rear ends. It's got your explanations in it of how everything goes together, how it works, pictures of your gear patterns, and pretty much tell you everything you need to set up the rear end. The only special tools I used other than a shop press was the side bearing removal tool, which you can get by without. You can, uh, I'll uh, cut the races off or heat them up a little bit with a torch and get them off. But this side bearing puller makes it a lot easier. Got this little piece here, 
sets down in there. Then you take this piece right here and turn these nuts on each side and this clamp a little notch on each side and this will go up under the bearing. Then this piece will run down against this piece and pull the bearing off. Makes it a lot easier. My pinion bearing, oh, I used a shop press and a bearing separator. One of them little things that split in half with two studs on it. Use one of those to get my pinion bearing off. Um, but I got it all back in there. I got the pattern checked on it. And everything checks good. And now I'm fixing to disassemble it and put it back together for the final time. Uh, one of the things that these folks that took it apart done is these caps right here. When you take these caps off, you need to mark them. Because they go in, it's just like the cap, a bearing cap in an engine. They go in a specific spot. They're machined for one spot. But I got lucky. What I done is I put one of them on and just run my finger around the inside of it. And you could tell that it was a... 16th of an inch or so out of alignment it didn't fit and I moved it over to the other side and it was true all the way around so I just used process of elimination and figured out which side they went on got that figured out and another thing they done when they took the pinion out when they took the nut off of the pinion they took apparently took a hammer just a regular hard hammer and drove the pinion out and it messed the threads all up on the pinion well it was an oddball thread that I couldn't find a tap for. I mean, I couldn't find a die for to clean the threads up. Handy little trick I figured out is I took, and I don't know whether you can see it, but I took an old pinion nut and took a little small saw and cut six little grooves around inside the nut down into the threads and made a cutting surface just like you would have on a thread chaser and put some cutting oil on it and greased it up good and run it on and off two or three times and it cleaned the threads up just as pretty as you ever seen and the uh, nut screwed on it just perfect and I got lucky on that but if you ever taking one of these things apart be sure not to hit the end of the pinion with a hard hammer use a brass hammer, a brass drift a rubber hammer, a plastic hammer, anything besides a steel hammer because it will bugger those threads up and it makes it a bear to figure out how to get it straightened out. Another tip that I want to point out if you're working on one of these rear ends is this carrier, when you go, this is the old carrier, when you go to mount the gear on this mating surface you need to make sure that that thing is perfectly clean. There's no burrs or any kind of ridges or anything that's going to cause that gear not to seat properly down onto that uh, carrier. You can take and run a, you know, might want to run a file or something on the surface of it just to make sure it's clean. And you want to do the same thing on the other end of the ring gear um, to make sure it's clean because if it's cocked. A half of, or a thousandth of an inch, that's enough to throw your gear off and cause noise and um, cause noise, build up heat, not just generally not work, perform very well. Another thing I want to talk about that a lot of people don't understand is this crush sleeve. It goes between the two pinion bearings. And when you tighten that nut down, on the pinion, it takes four or five hundred pounds of force to crush this uh, ridge in it. That ridge is made where the crush, when you tighten it down, it crushes. And that's what maintains the load on the bearing. That was one of the things they overlooked when they took it apart and put it back together themselves. You got to really bear down on that nut to crush this sleeve and get it tight. And you won't a certain amount of what they call preload on the bearings and uh, you measure that with your uh, a dial operated inch pound torque wrench put it on the nut put put your socket on it that fits the nut 
and then the book calls on this one I think for 15 inch pounds but you get one of these dial it's got they, one of them clickers won't work it's got to have a dial and you can do it with a beam torque wrench but I found it not to be very accurate but you can use something like this I picked this one up at a tool store for 15 bucks a long time ago now I've never had it calibrated to see how accurate it is but I feel like it is fairly accurate and I mean I'm normally I'm not I mean well not never I ain't working on race cars space shuttles or anything like that uh, and other than that that's pretty much my tips of what I've came up with um, and like I said this is not meant to be this is not like some of my other videos it's not meant to be a complete comprehensive how-to guide on how to service the rear end but I was just gonna do this video while I had this rear end here and just pass on a few tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years and I'm not a professional rear end builder or drivetrain technician by no means but I have worked on and pieced together out of used parts and I've done a lot of work with putting in new ring gears and stuff over the years but I mean I don't do three dozen of these a week I just do one you know every month or two or just from time to time sometimes it goes, seems like it goes in spurts um, but anyway I hope this information helps somebody if anybody has any questions just feel free to ask or anything that I didn't explain that you got a question about I may can answer it or I may not can but the one handy tip that I really wanted to pass on was cutting grooves in this nut to make a thread chaser and that works on all kind of stuff if something odd and you can't find a die or a thread chaser you can cut you some grooves in there and I've also uh, in the past you got a hole that uh, the threads is messed up in you can take a bolt and just take a little saw and just cut you a couple of grooves right here long ways across the bolt cut you about three grooves around it and it and all it good and it'll work like a thread chaser it'll clean those threads up real good uh, but anyhow that's all the tips I got on this job like I said I hope it helps somebody out